Hi there, for this video we'll be talking about three different ways that you can dampen your heavyweight printmaking paper in order to make it more receptive to the ink when you're doing monotypes or when you're printing by hand. It's a really common thing to dampen printmaking paper anytime you're doing an intaglio print, like if you were printing a copper plate or a dry point plate that you've scratched into plexiglass, if you want the paper to be soft enough to get down into those grooves as you're running it through the intaglio press. This is um, pretty much a required step for those methods, but often with monotypes it's not necessary to dampen your paper. It's just an optional thing if you feel like you're not getting a very good level of ink transfer and you want to pick up more of the ink that's still on the plate, dampening it may solve the problem. So I have three sheets of heavyweight printmaking paper. This paper is designed to be dampened, so you want to make sure you're using paper that really has enough internal sizing, which is the glue that holds the fibers of the paper together. Um, if it doesn't have a lot of internal sizing, what's going to happen is when you dampen the paper, it may just crumble apart. Like if you just took regular uh, photocopy paper and soaked it, you know it would just sort of like rip apart as you're handling it. So you need to choose papers that have some sizing in it. When you order papers in a catalog or if you go into a, a art supply store, they can tell you whether the paper has been heavily sized. Uh, like watercolor paper is very heavily sized. It has glue inside the fibers, but it also has an external coating of glue so that the watercolors really just sort of sit on top of the paper much longer and don't absorb in so quickly. That's maybe too heavily sized for our purposes. We want paper that's medium sized. So the paper it's like Canson Edition, Lennox Papers, Reeves BFK, Somerset Satin, those are all some of my favorite papers. They are considered medium sized papers, which means they absorb the water pretty easily and um, but are still quite strong papers, so they're not going to fall apart. You'd never want to soak or wet your washi papers um, unless you know that they're, well some washi papers have long enough fibers that they're less likely to fall apart, but the really delicate papers that are almost like tissue paper, they wouldn't survive being soaked and um, gotten really wet like this. So you want to use your heavier western style printmaking papers for these processes. And I'm going to give, show you three different options depending on what your home studio is set up like. Whether you have um, certain materials and not others, you'll have some different ways to um, dampen your paper. So if you're just planning to print one print at a, at a sitting and you don't want to have a lot of damp paper um, prepared, you can just use, uh, one of the easiest ways is just to use a sponge. So this is a clean cellulose sponge. You want to make sure that it's the kind of sponge that will hold the water and not, um, there's some foam sponge brushes that the water, or, or foam, not brushes, but foam like blocks that the water just like runs out. So you don't want that kind of uh, sponge. You want ones that hold the water pretty well. And we're not going to be completely soaking this. We're just going to dip in, you know, just the tip of it so it's wet. And then we'll be brushing the sponge across the paper. You can do it in a couple different directions. It could be that it starts to um, really soak in. I'll try to show you the sheen on the paper so that you have an idea of, that's really the best way to judge how wet it is, is to look at the amount of light that's hitting the paper. So if it's really glossy, it's probably a little bit too wet for most processes. You want to either allow it to soak in a little bit longer until it's just sort of uh, limp but not super shiny, um, or you could blot off some of the excess. So if you feel like uh, you want to get right to printing and you don't want to wait for it to absorb on its own, you can use the blotter. So the blotter is a super absorbent paper. It's more like a paper towel. It um, cannot hold up to being soaked. So you, you wouldn't want to print on blotters typically. But um, one way, if you're, if you're not sure whether the paper is blotter paper or printer paper, they both feel really heavyweight. And so sometimes it's easy for students to get confused between what's a blotter and what's their heavyweight printing paper. If you want to test it, you can just pick up a little drop of water and splash it onto the blotter and it's going to absorb the water immediately. So there's no shine left on there, but it's sort of puckered up the paper, like it's swollen up like it's a water blister almost. I'm trying to get some um, side lighting there. Let's see if we can... <laughs> oh, these darn cameras. Um, but anyway, there's a little bit of a sort of like a welt where the water just absorbed right in really um, quickly so it's not sitting on the top anymore. So that proves that this is the blotter and not your heavyweight printing paper. And you could just, you know, kind of quickly 
blot the paper until it's no longer as shiny. And again, you always kind of look at the sheen in the light. There's sort of a little bit of a model texture left on there. Um, I figure out which light gives me the best reflections. There's a little bit there we can see at the tip. Um, so this would be okay to, to print with. Now you also might notice that if you only wet one side of the paper, it tends to want to curl. So if that's giving you a lot of problems, you could dampen the back side as well and then it should lay flat again. But uh, one benefit of keeping the back side dry is that the tape is going to attach much better to the dry side of the paper than um, a totally wet piece of paper. So you might find that your tape hinges pull loose if your paper is too wet. And it's more, also more likely that when you remove the tape hinges from damp paper, it's going to peel some of the paper with it, which is not a huge deal, but um, it's just one more thing that you might think about to, um, as you're printing, whether you want to dampen the whole back side of the paper or not. So sponging is one option. A second option is to use a sprayer. So I'm going to show you a couple of different sprayers. This was just a bottle that had some sort of cleaning fluid in it and I um, stripped off the label and I rinsed it out really well and just filled it with clean water. So this is a, a, a fairly good sprayer. Just so that we can see the spray pattern, I'm going to just use a piece of, um, of um, paper bag, but of course we're not going to be printing on the paper bag. So some sprayers are going to have kind of an uneven spray. You can see how some big droplets hit here. There's some um, finer spray here. And then there's some areas that still are really pretty dry. So this could be used deliberately if you decide you want to have more of a mottled tone to your transfer, like you don't want the whole image to transfer evenly, but you really like that kind of pointillistic, um, some brighter spots of uh, dots of color transferring. You might do that deliberately, get a kind of coarse spray and only dampen part of the paper. And then if it's really too drippy, you could still blot it with your, uh, your blotter is a little bit to um, absorb some of the really wet spots but I often will even write blotter on there with a permanent marker so that I can keep it straight from my printing paper. Um, in your printmaking packs that you got this term the blotters are a little bit bigger than the printmaking paper that you got so that may also help you figure out which is which. Now if you want a more fine spray and if you want your paper to be more evenly damp so that the whole image transfers really thoroughly you can try um, this sprayer is really great if you are in, into ceramics or if you're doing, um, I don't know, hair or hat making or any of these things and you need a super fine spray, even like for misting plants. This is one of the best and pretty affordable sprayers that I found. This is made by Delta and I bought this one at Dick Blick online. I think it was seven or eight dollars, so it's not super cheap, but it's pretty amazing because it's got some sort of system there where as you're spraying it, you can just keep pumping and it gives a super fine mist, almost like a, um, I'm going to try to spray it in front of the camera here so you can see it, but it's just a super delicate spray. So as I spray over our paper bag, you can see there's not very many big droplets of water. It just, it just put down a really fine layer. When I run my fingers across it, you might see um, that it is wet, but it's a much finer mist and it would give a more even transfer to your colors as you're printing your monotype plates on there. So um, if you spot these anywhere, I don't know if any local stores carry uh, these, but they're pretty amazing and they last a really long time. So you can just keep pumping, like if you, you could just go through the whole bottle just with a gentle uh, pumping action and then you won't have distinct sprays. It'll just be a constant mist coming out of the spray bottle, which is um, really great, great thing to have. The third way that you can prepare paper. So again, that would be good if you're just prepping one sheet at a time. Um, uh, another way is to actually submerge your paper into a tray. So I have a cake pan here. You want to make sure that the pan is at least as wide as the narrow dimension of your paper. If you have a bigger tray, like a big industrial sink, or even um, if your bathtub's nice and clean, you could put an inch of water in the bottom of your bathtub, or if your kitchen sink's large enough, it, and it, there's no, um, you know, greasy food and stuff in there, clean it out before you fill it with water. Then you can prepare several sheets of paper at once. So if you're going to be printing all, you know, all day on a weekend and you want to have like four or five sheets ready to go and not have to run back and spray each one individually, this is a really kind of low maintenance way to get your paper all prepared. So you'll want to have several sheets. Let's say we've got, you know, three or four sheets here and 
You'll also want to have a plastic bag prepared. So this is just an eight gallon garbage bag and it happens to be large enough that I can cover up the paper without having to cut the bag open. Um, so this is fine. You just want to be able to protect it from air. You can tuck the ends in and then we would put a little bit of weight on there. If you have a smaller bag that's too small to actually cover your large sheet of printmaking paper, instead of trying to open up the bag while the paper's wet and get wet paper in there, which is really a frustrating exercise, it's a lot um, easier if you just take a pair of scissors and just cut along the edge of the bag. In fact, cut along two edges of the bag and open it up into just a flat sheet of plastic. And then it's really easy to just fold it over the damp paper instead of trying to like squeeze it into a bag while it's wet. So I've got some water here I'm going to pour in. You don't need a ton of water, but you do want to make sure that the paper can be completely submerged under the water. So I think I have maybe just, um, you know, half an inch of water in there. It doesn't matter if it's warm water or cool water. The main thing is that you're able to get the paper all the way under the surface. So the first sheet of paper, we're going to make completely wet. So we're going to dip it all the way under the water and bring it up the other side, leaving the middle low enough that water can um, cover both sides. And then we just allow it to drip. I guess I'm blocking all my light. We're going to allow it to drip into the um, pan until the drips are running really slow. So that one is soaking wet, super limp. And then we're going to use a completely dry sheet. So we don't dip this one at all. We just lay it down dry and you're just going to alternate then. So you want to squeeze out any air bubbles so that the paper has a chance to absorb the moisture from the neighboring pieces and you just keep alternating. So if you have five or six sheets, you go completely wet, completely dry, completely wet, dry, and you keep alternating. Now, if you end up with a completely dry piece on top, I usually will dampen the side that's going to be up so that it has a chance to get as damp as the other sheets that are below it. Otherwise, if it's a completely dry sheet and it's only got a piece of wet paper below it, it's going to be about half as damp as it really needs to be to transfer well. So let's assume this is our last piece and um, it's not a big deal if you accidentally get the whole sheet wet, but I just usually try to touch down the bottom side into the tray and um, let the excess water drip off. And then we'll put the dry side down so that the wet surface is on the top when the sandwich is finished. And then we just wrap it up. Again, squeeze out any extra air bubbles that, that's on the plastic and between the individual sheets of paper. Try not to have big um, lumps underneath it as you're trying to dry it, but it's okay to fold a nice flat piece of plastic underneath there to kind of keep the moisture in. And then it's good if you have something large enough that you can lay on top of it, a scrap of plywood or a large book or, you know, anything you have that holds it down flat, maybe put a gallon of water on it to kind of hold it um, with a little bit of weight. It doesn't need a ton of weight, but it's mostly just so that the paper doesn't start to dry and curl up and that um, there's no bubbles of air that prevent the moisture from getting into the different sheets of paper. So you would do the stamp pack with a monotype. You really only need to do it a few minutes before you're ready to print. So maybe prepare your paper while your hands are nice and clean and then go start inking up your plates. And then when you're ready to actually print them, this paper should be um, just pretty much damp to the touch. It won't be nearly as shiny. If it does still look really shiny when you're ready to print it, you can, like this one, if I were to pull it out right now, you can see there's still a lot of shine on that paper. I would um, bring in the blotters and just, you know, sandwich the piece of wet paper between two blotters, quickly rub over it. If you don't have blotters, uh, use a nice clean, like a, a bath towel. That works great too. So just lay out a bath towel nice and flat on the table. Put your printmaking paper on there while it's wet. Flop, you know, a towel over it and just sandwich the paper between a uh, nice clean bath towel and that works great. And the bath towels are reusable. Eventually the blotters are going to get, the more water that they absorb, the more rippled they get. And um, eventually you, you probably can't use these anymore, but the bath towels are usable forever. So that's a more um, environmentally friendly option too. All right. So, so now you know how to dampen your paper. 
On the next demo, I'll be showing you how to incorporate a monotype print along with a relief block print so that you can play around with mono prints rather than just straight um, relief additions like you would in a normal wood block class.